The embankment of the Daqing River was breached, and it was suspected that the CCP conducted another flood discharge to Hebei to protect Tianjin. Insiders exposed the dark side of the Beijing Red Cross, a stretcher costs $21,000. God's warning signs, the CCP is about to collapse. It's all covered in today's China Truths. The embankment of the Daqing River was breached, and it was suspected that the CCP conducted another flood discharge to Hebei to protect Tianjin. On the morning of August 10, a significant incident unfolded as the dam located in Tonli Township, situated in Hebei Province and positioned at the upper reaches of the Daqing River, experienced a breach. This event drew the attention of local residents, who watched the overwhelming deluge from a distance. Another resident from Hebei who recorded footage at the scene of the embankment breach conveyed a sense of direness, stating, This is a critical situation, the embankment has been entirely breached. This breach resulted in a rapid surge of floodwaters that instantly transformed the landscape into an expansive body of water. Coinciding with this event, there was a noticeable decline in the floodwater level downstream in Taitu Town, Tianjin City, located in the lower sections of the Daqing River. China Youth Daily's report on the 10th disclosed a significant drop in the Daqing River's water level that morning, leading to the gradual withdrawal of certain rescue teams from the affected area. Although the ensuing floodwaters surged towards Taitu Town, the dam's reinforced structure successfully withheld the deluge, ensuring that not a single drop infiltrated. Several online users have candidly asserted in the comments section that the drop in water levels downstream is a direct consequence of the breach in the upper reaches. A report from Beifang.com indicates that over 6,000 residents hailing from Beizuotu, Nanzuotu, and Duandi villages, all situated in Wanko town near Hebei, were swiftly evacuated in response to the escalating flood situation. Recent times have witnessed the Chinese Communist Party CCP, strategically diverting floodwaters into Hebei province multiple times as a protective measure for Beijing, Xilan, and Tianjin. However, this approach has come at a cost, with Shuishou and Bazhou in Hebei province experiencing inundation due to these controlled releases, resulting in substantial casualties and extensive property damage. Many individuals have tragically lost both their homes and loved ones. Presently, Tianjin stands at the forefront of these challenges, being situated at the confluence of these floodwaters. As reported by official CCP media on August 9, the city, located at the outlet of the Nine Rivers, shoulders a staggering 75% of the flood discharge responsibility within the Haiha River Basin. With the onset of the flooding, the water levels of the Yongding River, Daqing River, and Duliujin River have surged precipitously, thrusting Tianjin into a state of extremely severe flood control circumstances. In a proactive move, the Central Theater Command took action on August 7, establishing an advanced joint headquarters along the front line of the Daqing River in Tianjin. This headquarters assumed unified command over the theater army, Tianjin garrison, armed police personnel, and militia forces engaged in disaster relief operations. Notably, on August 8, a high-level delegation comprising Chen Minor, secretary of the Tianjin Municipal Party Committee, Zhang Gong, mayor of Tianjin, Huang Ming, commander of the Central War Zone, Su Duqing, political commissar, and Zhu Wenxiang, deputy commander of the armed police force, visited Tianjin to oversee disaster relief efforts. Providing insights into these developments, current affairs commentator Yishan shared with NTD TV on August 10 that the Chinese Communist Army had declared the establishment of a forward headquarters in Tianjin. This deployment served a dual purpose, guarding against potential civil unrest and, significantly, concealing the extent of casualties. The army reportedly possesses mechanisms and facilities to efficiently manage and dispose of deceased individuals. Insiders exposed the dark side of the Beijing Red Cross, a stretcher costs $21,000. The Beijing Red Cross Society is currently facing public scrutiny over its fundraising efforts for flood relief. Doubts have emerged regarding the accuracy of the donation records, and allegations have been made by insiders regarding the organization's procurement practices. 
According to sources within the organization, the Red Cross allegedly acquired disaster relief supplies at significantly lower costs but then presented inflated price quotations to the public, thereby generating substantial profits. A recent online video posted by an internet user has intensified these concerns. The individual behind the video claimed to have had a first-hand view of the organization's operations, having been employed by two companies affiliated with the Red Cross. This insider provided details on the cost of various items produced by the Red Cross, revealing that a basic tent was priced at 37,000 yuan, about $5,112, and a simple stretcher at over 150,000 yuan, about $20,727. The insider further recounted their astonishment at these exorbitant prices, particularly considering their modest income of only a few thousand yuan. They recalled thinking that even after several years of work, they would be unable to afford a stretcher without foregoing necessities. The insider also highlighted the case of a modified mobile command vehicle, which reportedly carried a price tag of more than 200,000 yuan, about $27,636, before modification and soared to a staggering 12.8 million yuan, about $1.769 million, post-modification. Furthermore, in a separate incident in July, the Beijing Red Cross deviated from conventional practice by donating 100 cases of sparkling water instead of mineral water to a hospital in Beijing. Notably, each case was priced at an average of 331 yuan, $46, with each bottle of sparkling water commanding a price of 13.8 yuan, $2. This peculiar choice prompted widespread skepticism among netizens. According to archived data on the official website, a noteworthy expenditure occurred on December 26 of the preceding year. The association committed nearly 740,000 yuan, about $102,206, for the procurement of 485 tents. In a distinct instance from March 2021, the China Red Cross Society furnished the Beijing Red Cross Society with a batch of cotton tents, reflecting unit prices ranging between 1,760 and 1,900 yuan, 243 to 262 dollars. Counterintuitively, most tents on prevalent online shopping platforms are listed at approximately 300 yuan, 41 dollars. The list includes donations that stand out because their prices are significantly higher than market rates. Surprisingly, contributors on this list have names associated with those associated with the Red Cross Society. On July 31, the Beijing Red Cross Society's official website presented the comprehensive inventory of donations received in July 2023, which revealed a significant donation of luxury clothes valued at nearly 1.5 million yuan, about $207,260, from the Beijing Wumu Clothing Company. Trousers, suits, short-sleeved t-shirts, and short-sleeved shirts were among the items donated. Notably, leather jackets were priced at 1,400 yuan, $193, per unit, while down jackets commanded 880 yuan, $121, per unit. The juxtaposition of high-end clothing for disaster relief, including down jackets and leather jackets, has caught public attention. This isn't the first time the company has made hefty clothing donations. In August of the previous year, they donated millions of yuan in clothing to the Beijing Red Cross. Netizens were quick to uncover a noteworthy connection, the registered legal representative of Beijing Wumu Clothing, identified as Ji Lianxu, shares a name with an executive director of the Beijing Red Cross. This coincidence has given rise to external speculation that these two individuals might indeed be the same. Mocking voices emerged, suggesting that the organization's intention might be to employ public donations to acquire its luxury apparel, artfully disguising the act under the guise of charitable giving. Such sentiments solidified the perception that the Red Cross's credibility has been fundamentally eroded in the eyes of the public. Amidst the unfolding flood crisis in northeast China, an urgent call for relief supplies prompted the Beijing Red Cross Society to initiate an online donation campaign several days ago. However, society's plea for assistance in the wake of a natural disaster has also been met with skepticism, as some accuse it of misappropriating funds. 
pushing the envelope, certain netizens deliberately contributed a mere 0.01 yuan, a move designed to publicly embarrass the Beijing Red Cross. Responding to the potential for such malicious donations, the organization swiftly revised its minimum donation threshold to 1 yuan. Rather than garnering widespread support, the initiative has been met with public derision. Netizens flooded the comment section with messages evoking the infamous Guamimi incident, stating, I will never forget Guamimi, and ever since the Guamimi incident, I've associated the Red Cross with disrepute, not to mention donations. The Red Cross Society of China has grappled with a series of negative events since 2000, notably during the aftermath of the Wenchuan earthquake in 2008. During that crisis, considerable donations were received, yet suspicions arose regarding potential embezzlement. The infamous 2011 Guamimi incident further eroded the organization's standing. Guamimi, who claimed to be a commercial general manager of the Red Cross Society of China, showcased opulent villas, luxury automobiles, and designer handbags on Weibo, triggering a public outcry. This incident badly damaged the Red Cross Society of China's credibility, resulting in a significant drop in donations. Recently, following disasters in Zhuizhou and other Hebei province locations, online exposés revealed suspicions of relief supplies being resold, alongside allegations of government personnel seizing donations and withholding them from the intended recipients. Within the context of public knowledge, the Red Cross Society of China is recognized as a non-governmental organization sponsored by the government. Although distinct from the International Committee of the Red Cross, it operates under the guidance of the CCP government. This affiliation grants it the role of a government assistant, a role beyond the purview of ordinary charitable organizations. God's warning signs, the CCP is about to collapse. According to an analysis released in the Epoch Times written by Wang Yochuin, a former member of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the CCP, a remarkable turn of events has unfolded in China recently, collectively pointing towards the imminent collapse of the CCP. Foremost among these portents is the unexpected inundation of the Forbidden City, a symbol of imperial legacy that housed 24 dynasty monarchs throughout the eras of the Ming and Qing. The Forbidden City has an intricate drainage network that, for over six centuries, has safeguarded against flooding. However, dual deluges struck Beijing on July 21 and then again on July 31. The gravity of the situation is vividly depicted in social media posts that show floodwaters rising rapidly, submerging moats, and confusing the line separating the river from the bridge. It is worth noting that the heart of the CCP authority, Zongnanhai, is connected to the Forbidden City by an underground drainage complex. Combining traditional beliefs with a contemporary interpretation, Feng Shui masters believe that the Forbidden City's submergence and the commensurate disruption in Zongnanhai augur in auspicious times ahead. Other analysts believe that such incidents represent the depletion of the CCP's vitality, potentially paving the way for its demise. In an extraordinary turn of events, a formidable super typhoon named Doxuri unleashed its fury upon Beijing and the expanse of northeast China in late July. This meteorological juggernaut began on a complicated path highlighted by numerous sequential 90-degree twists. Doxuri avoided Taiwan's coastline and made an unprecedented inland incursion before settling in Beijing and the northeastern regions. The repercussions were obvious, as an extraordinary downpour flooded the city and surrounding areas. Between July 29 and August 1, there was an incessant downpour that lasted 83 hours. The Wangjiayuan Reservoir in Changping, Beijing, recorded a staggering precipitation accumulation of 744.8 mm. This meteorological anomaly exceeded historical records established in 1891, which stood at 609 mm, establishing a new benchmark for measured rainfall in Beijing for 140 years. In pursuit of safeguarding Xilin New Area, the authorities within the Chinese Communist Party made the consequential decision to execute floodwater discharge into neighboring Hebei province's Shuizhou City, situated close to Beijing. Regrettably, this strategic maneuver transformed the historic city of Zhuizhou, with its millennia-old legacy, into a vast, watery expanse. 
The Kanan Typhoon followed closely behind Doksuri, carving its intriguing path. Contrary to expectations, when it reached Japan, this typhoon also made a stunning 90-degree turn, heading northward toward the Korean Peninsula and, eventually, northeastern China. In general, the provinces of Heilongjiang and eastern Jilin had significant and continuous precipitation, interrupted by torrential rainstorms. In preparation for Kanan's imminent downpour, the city of Shangxi in Heilongjiang issued an emergency notice on the evening of August 9, warning people of the impending deluge. Almost all civil activities were halted by the city from August 10 to August 12. In a sequence of unsettling events, seismic activity jolted various regions, alarming both specialists and locals. A total of 59 aftershocks had been recorded as of 8 a.m. on the same day, making this seismic event the province's most powerful in 10 years. Remarkably, the tremors reverberated across a vast expanse, with reports emerging that Beijing, some 300 kilometers away to the north, was not spared from feeling the Earth's unsettling movements. Similarly, Luding County in Sichuan Province had an earthquake on August 7, while Hezi City in Shandong Province, Yubin City in Sichuan, and Ardish City in Xinjiang also felt tremors on August 9. This unsettling trend persisted on August 10, when earthquakes struck Yin City in Sichuan Province and Jimsar County in Xinjiang Province. Anwa City, located in Hebei Province, witnessed a mesmerizing phenomenon taking place against the backdrop of natural upheaval. On August 7, a startled netizen shared a video of a multitude of wild geese making an odd human-like figure in the sky as they traveled southward. This event defied convention, as the customary time for such migratory behavior is typically during the autumn months. Remarkably, this display transpired during the lunar month of June, a period characterized by the scorching midsummer heat known as the mid-volt in traditional terms. Simultaneously, perplexing water-related incidents heightened the sense of uncertainty. On August 8, a peculiar event occurred at Wallakin Subway Station on Beijing's Line 15 at Ronghui Garden in Konggang. A large and unexpected hole appeared on the lawn, unleashing a torrent of muddy water and billowing steam. The underlying cause, which might be related to crustal movements, sparked both curiosity and concern. This unusual phenomenon of spontaneous water surges was not limited to this location, as similar instances were recorded in Hebei and Hunan provinces following severe rains. On August 5, snowflakes fell from the sky in Pingshan County, Hebei Province, as another example of the unnatural weather patterns that exist. This meteorological phenomenon, known as June snow, traditionally carries connotations of impending national turmoil. As if echoing the series sentiment, netizens in Anping Town, Xiangha County, and Langfang City of Hebei Province shared images of snowflakes falling on the evening of August 7. The natural world continued to astound as Ms. Chen, an employee of Kunming Grant Yachting Company, captured a breathtaking image at Dianchi Lake's Haging West Wharf at 10 a.m. on August 6. Fish leaped regularly from the surface of the water, creating a mesmerizing scene reminiscent of an exploding pot. Hu Yang, deputy chief physician of the Respiratory Medicine Department of Shanghai Pulmonary Hospital, highlighted a recent spike in new COVID-19 cases and the emergence of patients testing positive for the third time on Weibo on August 10. On a wider scale, the CCP Centers for Disease Control and Prevention revealed, on August 3, 455 new COVID cases characterized as severe and 65 reported deaths during July. Public skepticism about the reliability of CCP data has grown into a shared feeling among conscientious people both within and beyond China's borders. Indeed, the number of people who have died under the CCP surpasses that of any other tyrannical regime, both domestic and international. The inhuman practice of brutally harvesting organs from Falun Gong practitioners, which began in the late 1990s, defied morality, law, and human decency, branding the CCP as an unprecedented evil on this planet. In June 2002, a naturally formed Tibetan character stone was discovered in Pingtang County, Guizhou Province. This two 70 million year old artifact, intriguingly carved with the six letters Death of the Communist Party of China, carried profound implications. 
This finding, which some saw as a manifestation of the will of God, served as a warning to the world, foreshadowing the CCP's inevitable collapse. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.